You're listening to the between game music here on WGY. The Mets going down to defeat 8-2 at the hands of the Milwaukee Braves in the opener of this Sunday's doubleheader at Shea Stadium. From Shea Stadium in New York, it's the New York Mets against the Milwaukee Braves in the second game of today's doubleheader. Rango Beer brings you National League Baseball with the New York Mets. Rango, New York City's largest selling beer. And what a remarkable thing that is. In New York, the city of so many different people with different tastes, one beer has become the favorite. Rain Gold Extra Dry. We don't know why so many people like our beer, but we must be doing something right. This game is also brought to you by Viceroy. Not too strong, not too light. Viceroy's got the filter for the taste that's right. And by the Shell Oil Company. Makers of Super Shell, the gasoline for good mileage. Stop at the clean white pump for Super Shell. Hi, everybody. This is Ralph Kiner, along with Bob Murphy and Lindsey Nelson for the second game of this doubleheader. The umpires have gone over their lineup cards. They have taken their sneakers, and we're about all set to go. The well, lineups for this second game, the first game won by Milwaukee 8-2. We'll see Bobby Klaus, the leadoff batter for the Mets, playing third base. Batting second in that second base, Ron Hunt. Batting third, playing right field, Johnny Lewis. In the cleanup position, in left field, Joe Christopher. Batting in the fifth position and playing first base, Ed Cranepool. Batting sixth, and in center field, Ron Swoboda. Batting seventh, the shortstop, Roy McMillan. Batting eighth, and catching Chris Canizero. And the pitcher, Larry Bernard, will be batting ninth. Mets have won eight and lost 15, and now they take the field. The Milwaukee Brave lineup. They have a record of 10 wins and 9 losses now, winning the first game. We'll see Philippe Lou as the leadoff batter in center field. Batting second and playing in left field, Mac Jones. Hank Aaron will bat third. He'll be playing right field. In the cleanup position, batting fourth and playing third base, Ed Matthews. The catcher, Joe Torrey, will be batting fifth. Gene Oliver at first base, batting sixth. Dennis Menke at shortstop, batting seventh. Frank Bowling, the second baseman in the 8th batting position, and the pitcher Clay Carroll batting ninth. The umpire for the game today, the second game, Lee Wire behind home plate, at first base John Kepler, at second base Frank Chicory, and at third base Ken Burkhart. So Larry Bernard, who is making his fourth major league start, Larry had one start in 1964. He won five and lost five, was in 44 games. He became the first Met to ever win four games in a row in 1964. He hurt his shoulder, and his record fell off after those four in a row to a five and five record. His first year in the major leagues, 1963, he won three and lost eight. That was in 58 games. He made his first major league start against San Francisco, July 18th of 1963. After seven innings, he was taken out leading 5-4, to four, but the Mets went on to lose it 6-5. to five. He had made 30 prior appearances in the league before his first start, and now here today he is making his fourth start. His record home won in the first pitch to Felipe Lewis hit down the second. A two-hopper taken by Ron Hunt. He throws the green pool one away. Philippe Ballou batting at 229 is out for the first out of his second game. It'll bring up Mac Jones. <laughs> Mac Jones, a left hand batter, hitting at 227. Jones had a two run home run in the third inning of the first game, won by Milwaukee, 8 to 2. And the first pitch by. Larry Bernard is swung on a miss, strike one. Larry coming in with a fastball in the outside corner, picking up the first strike. And now the right-hander back again. And a drive to left field behind the air. Moving back in the warning track is Christopher. He's looking at his goal in there. Ball. Home run for Mac Jones, his second today. His third home run of the 1965 season, the third pitch by, made by Larry Bernard in the Mets trail, one to nothing. Braves used three home runs in the first game to score seven of their eight runs. Now I have picked up the first one of the game. That'll bring up Hank Aaron. Number 44, Hank Aaron. 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 
pitched it in nine consecutive games, and he takes the first pitch on the outside corner for a strike. Had two hits and five times up in the first game, both infield hits. Now he singles to center field. Pitch lined into center field, taken by Swoboda on the second off, and he throws it on in. That'll bring up the cleanup batter, Ed Matthews. Thank you, and now I have hit his 10 consecutive ball games. Matthews, a left-hand batter, hitting 284. He had a single and five times up in the first game. He drove in a run, and he takes the first pitch, hits it down the second. A chance for two, bobbled by Ron Hunt. Ron Hunt is trying to pivot around and get the ball off to the shortstop, Roy McMillan, covering at second base. Reached in, couldn't grab a hold of it, and hang on to it. It's an error against Ron. Well, that keeps... Things going for the Milwaukee Braves, puts runners at first and second base, and it brings up Joe Torre. Joe had a two-run home run in the first inning of the first game off Al Jackson to put the Braves out in front. And he had a single to go along for a two-for-four first game day. Batting at 311 with four home runs and nine runs batted in. And... Hank Aarons chased back to second base as Larry Bernard spins around on the pitching rubber. Now Larry sets again. And his pitch to the plate is inside for ball one. Larry so far this year has appeared in six previous games. Worked six innings, giving up eight hits. And that time he walked eight, struck out four. Now the pitch back to the plate again, hit high in the air, an infield fly, the batter is automatically out. First baseman Eddie Crane will call him for it, he makes the catch. Runners can proceed on the base paths at their own risk on this field fly, but ball got out in the infield, they both held. Hank Aaron at second base, Eddie Matthews at first. That brings up Gene Oliver with two men away, Braves leading one to nothing on the home run by Mac Jones. hand batter hitting at 143. Two for five in the first game. And he bounces one back to the mound. A one hopper for Larry Bernard. He takes it, tosses the first base, and that retires the side. One run on two hits. One error. Two men left on. And the score after the first half inning. The Braves won. The Mets nothing. And now, Mets coming to bat in the bottom half of the first inning. They trail one nothing behind on the home run by Mac Jones to the left field. First man up for the Mets will be Bobby Cloud. After Bobby, Ron Hunt and Johnny Lewis, and they'll be batting against Clay Carroll. Carroll, a right-hander, has won one and lost none. his second major league start his sixth game this year and the first pitch is inside and high ball one fastball missing around the letters Bell has worked five and two thirds previous innings giving up eight hits walking two striking out one and he comes back with a fastball for a strike one ball one strike Carroll is 24 years of age six foot one 190 pounds Lives in Sarasota, Florida. Spent most of last season with Denver in the Pacific Coast League. Now he goes into the windup as one one delivery curveball. It's on the outside corner. It's strike two. One and two on Bobby Klaus, who's batting 149. Hander back again. Curveball hit foul. Ball rolling down toward Don Hefner, the coach of the third base box. Yogi Berra coaching at first base. He caught in the first game. In this game, Chris Canizero is doing the catching. Braves going over 500 with their win in the first game. They are now 10 and 9. 
Now one two, a curve again foul, this time off the end of the bat. Ball going back at the catcher. The count holds at one ball and two strikes. Philadelphia defeated St. Louis in their only game today, four to two. Winning pitcher Art Mahaffey with help from Ed Roebuck in the ninth inning. Stewart and Callison home run. Losing pitcher was Ray Sadecki. Fastball popped up. Third baseman Eddie Matthews calling for it. And he makes the catch. One away now for the New York Mets. Tomorrow we wait for Ron Hunt to come up. We'll pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets baseball network. A 10 on the dial, WGY and WGFM Schenectady. Ralph Kider along with Bob Murphy and Lindsey Nelson from Shea Stadium. The second game just getting underway. Braves lead one and nothing. And the Mets with their second hitter up. Ron Hunt, he takes the curve for a strike. for four in the first game. And the pitch back to him is looked at. It's strike two. Oh and two to Ron Hunt with Johnny Lewis on deck. And Craig Carroll into the windup and back at two strikes. It's in the dirt and on the play Ron Hunt was going to bunt for a two strike punt and look for a base hit. But the ball is bounced in the dirt. It goes on back to the screen, and the count moves to one and two. Ron likes to bunt with two strikes. So far, he hasn't been successful on it in this season. He's batting at 276. This is his ninth game. Eight hits and 29 times up. No home runs. One run batted in. One two pitch is high and tight, and Ron has to move away. Two balls and two strikes. Two balls, two strikes. Carroll, a long look at the signs now into the windup. And a curveball is too low for ball three. Count goes to three and two. And now Joe Torrey trotting out to the mound to take the ball back and have some words with Clay Carroll. Another National League score at the end of eight. Pittsburgh leading Cincinnati three to two. Arrigo now pitching for the Reds. McBean in for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Reds picking up two runs and a home run by Pavletic in the seventh inning. At the end of three innings, Minnesota three, Chicago nothing. White Sox have Howard going for them. Pass ball for the Twins. Three two pitches, ball four. Cole Rodder becomes the first Met base runner.
Mr. Burrow, right hand batter, stepping out of the batter's box, now getting back in. And the next delivery is sliced off the right field, moving in now after going back as Hank Aaron, he makes the catch. In the inning, no runs, no hits, no errors, a walk, a man left on base. And the score at the end of one, the Braves won, the Mets nothing. Moving now to the top of the second inning. to lead off for the Milwaukee Braves and Larry Bernard with his first pitch. It's punted right out to the mound. Larry on it in a hurry. Throws the first base in a hurry and gets his man. So Larry picks up the first man on one pitch. He did the same thing in the first inning, getting Philippe Alou to ground out to second base. And he'll now pick the Frank Bowling. Menke with a home run in the first game. A two for three first game, now out for the first time here. He was batting 274. Bowling coming in at 217. And Bowling, a right hand batter, takes a curveball for strike one. Bowling had one hit and four times up. Base hit coming off Al Jackson. Bernard back away and uh, a little bit low. It's ball one. One ball, one strike. Braves leading 1-0. And the next pitch is hit slowly to third. If it stays fair, it's going to be a base hit. They're going to let it roll and then hits the bag. So it's a base hit. Bobby Klaus had no other chance. A swinging run. Ball top right down the line. He was coming in. Decided to let it roll, hoping that it might go foul. It went on down and hit the bag of fair territory. No bowling gets a hit. And with one out... The pitcher, Clay Carroll, comes up. This will be the first time that he's been at bat. Throw to first base, but the play not close there. Bowling not too fast. Short lead at first. That's looking for a butt with one away. And the pitch is bunted foul. Ball down in the dirt. Strike one. Carroll has been in five games. He has yet to be up. So this is technically his first time at bat. We'll have to wait and see and see what happens before we'll actually know whether he'll get charged with an at bat. Braves leading one run on three hits, and that's no runs and no hits. Cincinnati trailing by a score of three to two as they batted in the ninth inning. Came up with three runs. They have taken the lead over Pittsburgh five to three now. Pittsburgh batting in the bottom half of the ninth. Now Bernard backs off the pitching river, but Ed Cranepool was charging all in from first base and had got in too far for a play at first. And a zero now checking with Bernard with the pitching rubber. Philadelphia over St. Louis, four to two in their only game. Cincinnati leading now five to three in the bottom half of the ninth. At the end of eight, Houston eight, Chicago five. And at the end of two, the Dodgers nothing, the Giants nothing. Right here, one nothing. Gray's lead. Now the pitch. It's butted out in front of the plate. Have to go to first base. Canizero picks it up, throws to Ron Hunt covering there. And the sacrifice is executed as Frank Bowling goes on down to second. Two four if you're scoring. It brings up Felipe Lou batting for the second time. Felipe had one pitch in this game. He grounded out to second base. One for five in the first game. Lou batting 225, a right-hand batter. And the first pitch here is taken for a strike. Larry Bernard making his first start this year. He checks at second base, then comes back home inside with a fastball. Lou has to back away, one ball, one strike.
Larry, 23 years of age, 6'2", 203 pounds. He lives in Huntington Station, New York now, Long Island. And a 1-1 delivery right through the middle, going over is Ron Hunt to come up with the ball. He throws the third base, and the runner is safe there, but he saved a run. for Philippe Ballou and Ron Hunt, how he got back there is anyone's guess, but he backhanded that ball in back of second base. It was on its way to center field, and Frank Bowling rounded it third. Hunt tried to get him after he had made the turn, but Bowling got back in time. A good play on his part. And so now Milwaukee with a runner at third base and one at first, a base hit for Lou. And the batter is Mac Jones. Mack with a home run his first time up. He swings and misses strike one. Braves leading on the home run by Jones. His home run going to left field. Third home run this year. And the pitch is a changeup. It's inside and high. One ball, one strike. Batting 244, left hand batter. Two men away in the top of the second. And the next pitch is a curve, swung on and missed, strike two. Overhand curveball by Larry Bernard. One ball, two strikes. Chris Canizero sending the signs out to Larry. Runners at first and third. And the pitch. Curveball hit down the left field line. Foul. Ball going into the lower stand. The ball was a line drive in there. And now Canizero out to the mound to talk with Larry Bernard. Cardi, who normally would be playing left field off of his season last year, is still bothered with a bad back. He had quite a season. But now Mac Jones in left field. And the pitch is bounced to short. A two-hopper taken by Roy McMillan. He goes through the back, wins the race, and retires the side. In the inning, no runs, two hits. There were no errors. Two men left on, and the score at the end of one and a half innings. The Braves won. The Mets nothing. Now the Mets trailing one to nothing, coming to bat here in the bottom half of the second. Ed Greenpool to lead off. On the mound, Clay Carroll. And he's now pitching to his fifth man. And the first pitch is looked at for a called strike. Ed with a base hit his last time up. One for four in the first game. His average now at 354. Braves winning the first game, eight to two. And the pitch back to the left-hand batter, hit hard, foul, down by Yogi Bear, and on out into the right field foul territory section. Greenville with three home runs and 15 runs batted in. Milwaukee infield playing at very deeply. Outfield also deep and shaded toward right field. He's being played as a full hitter. And a two strikes. Fastball is outside. One ball, two strikes. Dean Oliver at first base for Milwaukee. Frank Bowling at second base. The shortstop, Dennis Menke. The third baseman, Ed Matthews. Catcher, Joe Torrey. And the one-two pitch hit down the second. A two-hopper as Menke, as Bowling goes to his left. He comes up with it. Goes to first base for the out. Bottom half of the second. The Braves in front one to nothing. And Ron Swoboda will now come to bat. Ron went 0 for 3 in the first game. The drop is averaged down to 302. He has seven home runs, 14 runs batted in. And Carroll with his first pitch, a curveball. Ron started the swing and held off in time. It's ball one. Two balls, no 
strike. Ron's mother is up here from the Baltimore area to watch him play here today, the doubleheader. Incidentally, Baltimore defeated Detroit 7-1. The winning pitcher, Mel Pappas, he gave up only six hits. The losing pitcher was Phil Reagan. Powell, a home run in the third with no one on. In there with a fastball. Two balls, one strike. At the end of four and a half, Minnesota four, the White Sox nothing. Kansas City out in the top of the first, no score. Angels coming out. That game out on the coast, the West Coast. Two balls, one strike. And the pitch back to Swoboda. It's too low for ball three. Three balls, one strike. Cleveland defeated Boston 9-4 in their first game, and the second game going for Cleveland, Sonny Siebert, pitching for Boston Stevenson. Yankees lost to Washington in a single game schedule, 5-4. Whitey Ford, the losing pitcher. A swing at the 3-1 pitch, strike two. 20 pitch in that Yankee game for Washington. Phil Ortega, former Dodger. Lentz and Lopez, Hector Lopez, home run. Both coming with no one on. Here's a 3-2 pitch. Down low, and it's ball four. So for the second time, Clay Carroll, he's unhappy about the call, walks a man on the 3-2 pitch. Let's have their second base run in the game, and it brings up Roy McMillan. Roy batting 192. in a run in the first game with one of his bases. Had one base hit and two times up. So Bona goes, the pitch is taken and it's down the second base in plenty of time and the second baseman Lemke is in front of the bag and so Bona has to push him back to try and get in. And he got him back all right. Now there's a little bit of worse action going on out there. So Bona goes off of the field. Boy, he ran into him and just pushed him right out of the way, right on back of the bag at second base. It wasn't Swoboda's fault at all because Menke was in there in front of the bag. Swoboda went straight in, and on the play, Roy McMillan took the pitch. So evidently a sign missed on the hit-and-run situation. They got one ball and no strike. Little Abner, boy, he is strong. ball, no strikes, the pitch back to McMillan, a foul ball top down the third base side. So the count at one and one. Scoring on that play goes 2-6 if you're keeping score with it. Rays lead one nothing. They have one run and four hits. The Mets have no runs and no hits. Clay Carroll against Larry Bernard. One delivery. Fastball hit down to the right side of Menke. He comes up with it. He has a good arm. Throws over to first base and gets his man. That retires the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. No one left on base. And the score at the end of two. The Braves won. The Mets nothing. Now the Mets trailing one to nothing. Coming to bat here in the bottom half of the second. Ed Greenpool to lead off. On the mound, Clay Carroll. And he's now pitching to his fifth man. And the first pitch is looked at for a call strike. Ed with a base hit his last time up. One for four in the first game. His average now at 354. Ray's winning the first game, eight to two. And the pitch back to the left-hand batter. Hit hard, foul. Down by Yogi Bear and on out into the right field foul territory section. Rainbow with three home runs and 15 runs batted in. The infield playing Ed very deeply. Outfield also deep and shaded toward right field. He's being played as a full hitter. And at two strikes, fastball is outside. One ball, two strikes. Gene Oliver at first base for Milwaukee. Frank Bowling at second base. The shortstop, Dennis Menke. The third baseman, Ed Matthews. Catcher, Joe Torre. And the one-two pitch hit down the second. A two-hopper as Menke, as Bowling goes to his left. He comes up with it, goes to first base for the out. One away in 
the bottom half of the second. The Braves in front, one to nothing. And Ron Swoboda will now come to bat. Ron went 0 for 3 in the first game. The drop is averaged down to 302. He has seven home runs, 14 runs batted in. His first pitch, a curveball. Ron started the swing and held off in time. It's ball one. One O delivery, in down too low. It's ball two. Two balls, no strike. Ron Mother is up here from the Baltimore area to watch him play here today in the doubleheader. Incidentally, Baltimore defeated Detroit 7-1. The winning pitcher, Milt Pappas, he gave up only six hits. The losing pitcher was Phil Reagan. Powell, a home run in the third with no one on. In there with a fastball. Two balls, one strike. At the end of four and a half, Minnesota four, the White Sox nothing. Kansas City out in the top of the first, no score. Angels coming out. That game out on the coast, the West Coast. Balls, one strike. And the pitch back to Swoboda. It's too low for ball three. Three balls, one strike. Cleveland defeated Boston nine to four in their first game, and the second game going for Cleveland, Sonny Siebert, pitching for Boston Stevenson. Yankees lost to Washington in a single game schedule, five to four. Whitey Ford, the losing pitcher. A swing at the three one pitch, strike two. When he pitched in that Yankee game for Washington, Phil Ortega, former Dodger, Linson Lopez, Hector Lopez, home run. Both coming with no one on. Here's a 3-2 pitch. Down low, and it's ball four. So for the second time, Clay Carroll, he's unhappy about the call, walks a man on the 3-2 pitch. Mets have their second base run in the game, and it brings up Roy McMillan. batting 192. Drove in a run in the first game with one of his bases. Had one base hit and two times up. So Bona goes, the pitch is taken and it's down the second base in plenty of time and the second baseman Menke is in front of the bag and Swoboda has to push him back to try and get in. And he got him back all right. Now there's a little bit of worse action going on out there as Roboto goes off of the field. Boy, he ran into him and just pushed him right out of the way, right on back of the bag at second base. It wasn't Roboto's ball at all because Menke was in there in front of the bag. Roboto went straight in, and on the play, Roy McMillan took the pitch. So evidently a sign missed on the hit and run situation. The count one ball and no strike. Little Abner, boy, he is strong. One ball, no strikes. The pitch back to McMillan. A foul ball top down the third base side. So the count at one and one. Scoring on that play goes 2 6 if you're keeping score with it. Rays lead 1 0. They have one run and four hits. The Mets have no runs and no hits. Clay Carroll against Larry Bernard. delivery. Fastball hit down to the right side of Menke. Comes up with it. He has a good arm. Throws over to first base and gets his man. That, reti that retires the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. No one left on base and the score. At the end of two, the Braves won. The Mets nothing. He moves to the top of the third. Braves leading one nothing as they come to bat against Larry Bernard. And the first man up will be Hank Aaron. Aaron single to center field his first time up, his third hit in this doubleheader. His record now at 10 consecutive games, and he's batting 354. And Larry starts him off with a fastball outside. One ball, no strike. Larry Bernard making his fourth major league start. 
1-0 delivery. Change of pace outside, ball two. Larry taking plenty off. The count now, two balls and no strikes. Final score, the Reds with three runs in the top of the ninth. Defeated Pittsburgh 5-3. Winning pitcher, Arrigo. Losing pitcher, McBean. Athletic, a home run in the seventh with a man on. Ball topped out to the third base side of the pitcher's mound. Larry comes off, gets it, throws the first base for the out. One out in the top of the third. And the batter coming up is Eddie Matthews. Eddie was safe on him there his first time. Up 0 for 1 in this game. 1 for 5 in the first. Houston coming up with three runs in the top of the ninth. They lead Chicago now 11 to 5 with the Cubs batting in the bottom half of the ninth. First pitch is strike one. the right side, taken there by an old famous name, very well known around Ebbets Field, in fact he was the master of right field at Ebbets Field, Mr. Dixie Walker, way right and back of Dixie, a person who was almost equally as famous, Hilda Chester, she's in the stands right back of Dixie, next pitch back is a curve low, one ball, two strikes. Like all home week for her with little old Wyatt back in here, Dixie Walker. One ball, two strikes. And Bernard back to the plate. The ball hit on the ground, down to Ron Hunt. Hunt over to first base, and Eddie Matthews is out. Two away, and Joe Torrey comes up. Out to Ed Cranepool in the air his first time up. He's batting 306. Had a home run in the first game to keep his hitting streak going. He has now hit in six consecutive games prior to this game. Strong right hand batter, had 20 home runs last year. And he lines one to center field, a base hit. Ron Swoboda coming over, picking it up. And Tori is safe at first. So Ed now is hit in seven consecutive games. Joe Torrey now is in its seven consecutive games, and it brings up Gene Oliver. Fifth hit off Larry Bernard. Braves lead one to nothing.
28. Six hits and 47 times up. And his next pitch, a curve that's outside and low. One ball, two strikes. Crowd today of 30,000. 
774. A little bit outside, two balls and no strikes. The total in the ballpark, 31,556. Now Larry with a count of 2-0 and on Dennis Menke. Braves with the bottom third of the order coming up here in the fourth inning. Milwaukee in front on the home run by Mac Jones. Low and outside, the fastball missing, 3-0. and Rheingold in any other beer. And Rheingold is going great in New Jersey, New England, and Pennsylvania, too. Why do Irish Americans like Rheingold? We don't know. But we must be doing something right. the fourth inning, Larry Bernard's on the mound for the Mets, and coming up now to keep you in the play-by-play, Bob Murphy. Okay, Ralph, Dennis Menke, who caught that bad hop. Forehead is the leadoff batter against Larry Bernard now as we go to the fourth inning. Dennis 0 for 1, bounce back to Larry Bernard, his previous time at bat. Breaking ball outside, one ball and no strike. Mother's Day crowd at Chase Stadium. The paid crowd today is 30,774. A little bit outside. Two balls and no strikes. The total in the ballpark, 31,556. Now Larry with a count of 2-0 on Dennis Menke. Braves with the bottom third of the order coming up here in the fourth inning. Milwaukee in front on the home run by Mac Jones. Low and outside, the fastball missing, 3-0. Mac Jones is a late starter in this series. He came on as a pinch hitter in the fifth inning yesterday and got three for three. He now has five hits and eight times at bat, including two home runs this series. behind on the hitter, the 3-0 delivery. Ball four outside. He missed on four in a row. So Menke goes down to first. That's the first walk Larry has given up, and it brings up Frank Bowling. Frank took a big swing and sent a slow roller right down the line toward the bag at third. They hadn't let it roll. And it hit the cushion for a base hit. off the stretch, delivers, the runner goes, hit and run, ground ball on the right side of the diamond. The only play is the first, Hunt firing on to Cranepool. And so, the Braves move the runner by playing hit and run, as Frank Bowling grounds out second to first. Now the pitcher, Clay Carroll, will be coming up. He sacrificed his first turn at bat, trying to help build a run when he punted Bowling across the second base. Carroll batting right-handed. He has not had an official time at bat this year. Now Larry in pitching position delivers to Carroll. A slow bounder back toward the mound. Barehanded by Bernard. The throw to first in time. Larry was hoping he'd have a play at third, but Bobby Klaus was also charged again for a play. He took a look at third, saw it was uncovered, wheeled around, and fired across in the dirt, but Crane Bull scooped it out. Larry caught that one with his bare hand. Now Clay Carroll is on, has been retired on the batter. Moving on to third goes Dennis Benke. The batter is Philippe Alou, the leadoff batter. Philippe got a base hit his last time up. And a great fielding play by Ron Hunt saved a run. Had the ball gone through, bowling would have come around to score. Ball one, fastball outside, and Larry had good stuff on it. Mac Jones, the on-deck batter, and then Henry Hunt. Now Bernard with his wide, up here's the pitch. Just a little bit under the knees, two balls and no strikes. from Tuesday night. The Mets will be in Milwaukee and they'll have a three-game series out there at County Stadium all-night ball game. This coming week, the Mets will be here in the Shea Stadium with two against the world champion Cardinals and four games next weekend with Cincinnati. 
Reds pulled another game out today. Ground ball bounced toward the middle. Big hop taken by Ron Hunt. Thrown to first in the dirt, and he scoops it out. The side is retired. Hunt had beautiful defensive position against the Louie, and he shaded it far over towards second. The field of that grounder almost behind the bag. No runs, no hits, no errors, one left on. At the end of three and a half, the score, the Braves won, and the New York Mets nothing. And now a word from Viceroy Cigarettes. Which filter cigarette should you be enjoying today? Some brands taste too strong, as if they didn't even have a filter. And some taste too light. You know the kind. They never seem to satisfy your taste. But there is an answer, and here it is. White boy got the taste that's right, not too strong and not too light. The taste that's right. That's right, Viceroy. The fact is, Viceroy is specifically designed to taste the way you'd like a filter cigarette to taste. Not too strong, not too light. Viceroy's got the filter for the taste that's right. When you try them, you'll agree. Viceroy's got the taste that's right. Viceroy's got the taste that's right. Not too strong and not too light. The taste that's right. Johnny Lewis will hit against right-hander Clay Carroll in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Johnny on a hit and run play, fly deep to left field in the first inning. It was run down by Mac Jones. Crowd of better than 30,000 here at Shea, stirring around now. Inside and low, ball one. In San Francisco, Jesus Salou has hit a two-run homer on Sandy Koufax for the fourth inning. Giants two, a Dodger nothing at the end of four. Ball two, it's low. For the second game in Chicago, Bob Bruce will pitch for Houston. Dick Ellsworth for Chicago. In the opener, the Astros hit three home runs to bury the Cubs 11 to 5 with Johnson, the winning pitcher, and Deal the loser. Cincinnati pulled a game out of the fire. They scored three in the ninth inning to beat Pittsburgh 5 to 3. 2 0 delivery. Ball three inside the high. And at Johnny Mack Stadium, Art my happy. St. Louis, 4 to 2. Roebuck helped him in the ninth. Nick Stewart had a two run over, and Johnny Callison connected nobody on. Joe Torrey going to the mound now to talk to his pitcher, Clay Carroll. Clay has gone behind on the leadoff batter in the inning, Johnny Lewis, 3 0. Joe Christopher. Joe flies to right at the first. This is the rubber game of the series. The opening game of the series was rained out Friday night. That's one behind Jack Fisher and Vinny Ryback yesterday on two home runs by Ron Swoboda. Raised the three home runs to win the first game today. Go to first, not in time. Three homers by Milwaukee knocked in seven of their eight runs. on deck. Clay Carroll delivers a fastball in for a strike. Young Clay Carroll was a very impressive pitcher when he came up to the Braves late last year after a good minor league season. He posted an earned run average of less than two earned runs for nine innings. Oliver holding against Lewis. Christopher blocked it a bunt, didn't offer a break to first, not in time. Lewis gets back. One ball, one strike on Joe Christopher. The Mets are a run behind. We're in the last of the fourth inning. Mac Jones, hitting his second home run of the day, has accounted for the only run in this ball game. Outside and low on a breaking ball. Two and one on Christopher. 
fifth and that started to fall yet for Christopher, who wound up last year a 300 hitter with 76 runs batted in. Joe hitting 239. Collected off Browninger in the opener of today's doubleheader. Now Carroll with a 2 1 pitch. A fly ball to center field, ambling back at Philippe Ballou. He taps the glove and makes the catch to the out. One out and one on. That'll bring up Green Pool. Heading grounded out, second to first. His only time at that. Eddie got a base hit off bowling club in the ninth inning of the opener. But he has gone through his first famine of the young season. Eddie's had only one hit in his last ten times at bat. Now the pitch back, Carroll. Foul ball. Wafted over behind the visiting dugout. Back into the field box area. And the cast drank one on Crane Pool. Ron Swoboda is the on-deck batter. One ball, one strike. Ray Carroll, a 24-year-old right-hander. Making his first start of the new season. Carroll has good size and a good arm. A line drive hit hard, a base hit hammered into center field. Corners, 
two men down. The pitch back, Lee Carroll, is fouled back over the screen, no play. Flushing, New York. Inning number five, and Matt Jones will lead off for the Braves, and he has been a thorn in the side of the Mets in this series. He has five hits at eight times at bat, including two home runs. Larry Bernard winds. Here's the pitch. Low and inside, ball one. He was in a red-hot streak during the spring down at West Palm Beach. He has a lot of power. He had 39 home runs in the International League last year. Back foot right on the restraining line. Swing and a miss. One ball, one strike. Larry has had a good sinker, and the Braves have been hitting the ball on the ground a great deal. up to short center. It could be tough to get to. Swoboda coming in. It breaks off McMillan's glove on his way to second is Jones. He's held a double. So that'll be a double. But I've made a good pitch on him. He jammed him. Hit him off the fist and off the bat handle. A blooper into shallow center field. McMillan after a long desperate rush. Just barely got his fingertips on it but not enough to make a catch. And it's a double for Mac Jones. Set those hard line drives that are caught. But Arth made a pitch that was about as good as you can make one, and the runner winds up on second. Henry Aaron, the batter. Henry has one hit and two times up. Ground ball wrapped hard. Oh, a play by McMillan. They've got Jones hung up between second and third. The ball is flipped to Bobby Cross. Cross tags him out. play by Roy McMillan, a hard hit grounder and the hole is short. Jones was sure that ball was going through for a base that he was heading home. But McMillan with a backhand stab flagged it down, turned around and said, well, what have we got here? 
ran right at Jones, made him commit himself. He broke to third. Mack flipped the ball to Bobby Klaus, and Jones is out. Henry Aaron on first with a fielder's choice with what normally is a base hit. Swing and a miss by Eddie Matthews, track one. Well, that's the way this game goes. That was a great play by McMillan. Max seems to specialize in spectacular plays during doubleheaders. A third of first, not in time. Perhaps his finest hour with the Mets game in the 23-inning game and the doubleheader last year with the Giants. He made a triple play in the 14th inning, and he could have been an unassisted triple play. Now the pitch on the way, outside and low. One ball, one strike. I think Jones thought he had seen that ball go by. Mack actually was lunging with it across the body, backhand stab, and reaching toward the outfield when he got it. Aaron grabs his lead at first. And a third of first. Save, it was close. on the first base side were willing to help umpire John Gibbler out. One ball, one strike on Matthews. Eddie has reached safely on an error, grounded out second to first. Abadar buys the runner. And as he stays in the set position, watching Henry Aaron, Matthews now breaks the spell by stepping out. Henry Aaron is an outstanding base runner. You can count on him year in and year out to get you about 20 steals in spots where they're very important. For the first, not in time. One ball, one strike to count on Eddie Matthews. Eddie had one hit in five trips in the opener, a swing and a miss on a real good sinker. One ball and two strikes. Eddie was fooled by it, started after, tried to hold up, but he had gone too far. Top half of the fifth inning, the Braves in front, one nothing. Aaron grabs the lead off first. Throws to first, not in time. Aaron really trying to fill the lead as though the Braves have a play on Left-hand slugger, Eddie Matthews at the plate. The pitch on the way. A swing and a miss. He struck him out. Larry Bernard fans, Eddie Matthews. Two men down. Right here we pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. A 10 of the dial, WGY and WGFM Schenectady. Stadium on the top of the fifth inning. Good ball game going. Braves one and the Mets nothing. The batter is Joe Torrey. He singled the center, has one for two. Low and outside. Chris again bluffing that throw to first. Torrey had a single and a two-run homer in the opener. He hit his home run in the first inning. won the opener, so the Mets are battling hard trying to gain a split, and this is the rubber game of the three-game series. Friday night ball game was rained out. It will be made up later on. Now Aaron with a lead off first. A pitch out, but nothing was on. Gene Oliver is the on-deck batter.
Joe Torrey hitting his second home run of the day. Too high to Gene Oliver, ball one. Mac Jones has hit two. And Dennis Menke has hit one. Way up high. Two balls and no strikes on Oliver. Braves as a team are going to hit a lot of home runs this year. They had six players hit 20 or more last year. Slow grounder down the third baseline. A real tough play. Bounce off down and throws. And he beat it out for a base hit. Oliver a slugger. Not fast to put it. You play him deep. He took a big swing, but just popped a real slow roller. Now Dennis Menke, the batter. Dennis has grounded out and drawn a walk. Nothing for one. But out delivers. Black foul back toward the crowd, no play. Well, the heavy artillery has done a job so far for Milwaukee today. Three home runs drove in seven of their eight runs in the opener. Two home runs have driven in all three of their runs in this ball game. Yesterday, the Mets used the heavy artillery. Now the pitch. Low and outside, one ball, one strike. Ron Swoboda's two home runs drove in all four runs in a 4-2 win for New York yesterday. Willie Davis has hit a two-run homer in the sixth inning off Gaylord Perry, and that ties up the Dodger Giant game. Now 2-2 in the top of the sixth. Hill hard, a smash to third, taken on a hop by Bobby Klaus. He plays to hot, and they force Oliver to retire the side. In the fifth inning for the Milwaukee Braves, they score two runs. There were three hits. No errors, one left on. So we've come halfway at the end of four and a half innings to score. The Braves three and the Mets nothing. Last half of the fifth inning, Canizero will be up against Clay Carroll. Casey made a phone call to Warren Spahn, and now Galen Sisko and Gary Kroll are warming in the bullpen. Bounce foul. Mets getting down toward the tail end of the batting order and trail by three, and so now the bullpen is on call. Larry Bernard is scheduled up next. Larry's out in the circle. Canizero is leading off here in the last of the fifth inning. the pitch to Chris, too high and inside. One ball, one strike. A one one delivery to Canizero. Inside, off the ribs. Chris lets it go and the count. Two balls and a strike. doubleheaders as usual for a Sunday this weekend. One game in Philadelphia, the Phillies beat the Cardinals 4-2, Mahaffey over Sadecki. Now the 2-1 pitch, driving the air to left field in front of it, waiting, and he falls down, Matt Jones, the bounce is over Jones, Canizero is on his way to second, and he'll go in standing up. That was a hard hit line drive that fooled Mac Jones. It will go as a two-base hit. He was really stunned by Catterzell. Jones appeared to be in front of it waiting and then realized the ball had him fooled and was going to land a little bit in front of him. He lunged for it and in doing so, slipped and fell. Ball bounced right over his head. He's lucky the ball didn't hit him. Went back to the fence. Now Larry Benoff is the scheduled hitter and Jesse Gander will bat for him. Jesse Gander batting against Clay Carroll. Fastball a strike on the inside corner. Washington built up a built up a five to two lead over eight innings, then held off the Yankees to win five to four in Washington. Ortega the winner for the loser. Round ball bounce toward the middle, off the glove of Pinky, on into the outfield. On his way to third is Canizero. He had to hold up, and now runners are on first and third. 
Lindsey may have been partially blocked off that time. He was playing Gonder, pulled over towards second. The ball was hit practically up the middle. Chris had to hold up to see whether or not the play was made. The ball had just hit the heel of the glove and went on into the outfield. It'll go as the base hit, and now Bobby Klaus is being called back. The Mets have runners on first and third, nobody out. And Charlie Smith is coming out to hit for it.
good stuff going, and he had good control. Now the changes for New York. Charlie Smith stays in the game. Charlie now playing third, so he has the lead-off spot in the batting order. Gather batted for Larry Bernard, and Jesse stays in. That means the pitcher, Galen Sisko, is in the number eight spot in the batting order. Galen was on call in the opening game here today and came in to get the side out effectively and then had to leave the game in favor of a hitter with New York five behind. Frank Bowling will hit against Galen Sisko as we go to the sixth inning. It's three to one in favor of Milwaukee. Mets have hit the ball considerably harder the last two innings against young Clay Carroll than they did over the first three. Frank Bowling has one hit and two times at bat. Pitch back Galen is a grounder, whacked to short, handled by Roy McMillan. He straightens up, throws in time, one down. So one pitch back Galen, he raises Frank Bowling, and it brings up Clay Carroll, the Milwaukee pitcher. on Clay Carroll. Philippe Alou is the on-deck hitter. Now Galen out of his wind. Up here's his pitch. Ground ball driven to short. Comes up on a big hop for McMillan. Max Pegg is in plenty of time. He's got him by four or five strides. So two up and two thrown out by Roy McMillan. That will bring up Alou, the center fielder. Philippe has one hit and three times up. He was deprived of an RBI when he got his base hit on a spectacular grab by Ron Hunt. Had the ball gone on through, it would have scored a run. Pitch to Philippe, a sidearm delivery off the outside corner. One ball and no strikes. Galen seems to be getting in a better groove with each outing, and he's working faster and throwing with more authority. Let up this time, a slipper taken low, ball two, it's 2-0. Two He was unable to work but very little during the spring. He came up with a sore arm right after he pitched against the White Sox in mid-March over in Sarasota. Driven in the air to center field. Back goes Swoboda on the run and make it over his head. It's a long drive for an extra base hit. Alou is on his way to second and he's then standing up with a line double. He, He teed off on that one. It was a climbing line drive like he did a golf ball. So Philippe has his second hit. He's on second with a two-out double. Coming on to bat is Mac Jones. Last time he came up, Benoit made a real good pitch. He jammed him, hit him off the bat handle, and Jones wound up with a bloop double. First time he came up, he hit the ball over the left field fence for a home run. He's had six hits and nine times at bat, including two home runs in the series. That's playing him around to right. Pitch by Galen. is inside of the knees. One ball and no strikes. He's had two home runs today. One to right field and one to left field. Way inside. Gander has to dig it out. Two balls and no strikes. Milwaukee won the opening game 8-2 as Tony Kleininger went all the way to pick up his fourth victory. Kleininger's four wins. He's had a two-hitter, two five-hitters, and a six-hitter. Henry Aaron is the on-deck batter. High fly ball into right field, and this one is fairly deep, but it's playable. Under it is Johnny Lewis, and Johnny has it. Bad retired at the sixth inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left. At the end of five and a half, the score, the Braves three, and the New York Mets one. Now Johnny Lewis will lead off as we move now into the last of the sixth inning. Real good ball game going. Braves three and the Mets one. The last two innings, the Mets hit Clay Carroll hard. The right 
Right-hander winds. Here's his pitch. Down on the dirt. It's ball one. Ground ball hit hard in the right side. One-handed by Frank Bowling. He pegs the first one away. Bowling to his glove side following the rim of the outfield grass. Reached down in one hand of that hot shot. One away and nobody on. Joe Christopher has flied to right and flied to center, so Joe has nothing for two. Under the knees, one ball, no strike. delivers to Christopher. Fast ball down the middle for a strike. One ball, one strike. Clay Carroll, 24 years old. Six footer who weighs 210. He holds up on the swing and the breaking ball misses outside. It's two balls and a strike. Joe off to a slower start this year, although last year he actually didn't become a regular until just about this time of the year. Now the 2-1 delivery. A squibber down the third baseline. Picked up in a hurry by Carroll. He throws on to first in time. Two men down. Joe took a big swing, but hit it on the ground slow between, halfway between the mound and the third baseline. So Clay Carroll bouncing back strong here in the sixth inning has retired the first two men. And now the hitter is Eddie Cranepool. Headline to double in the center field his last time up, one hit and two trips. So today, Eddie has had one hit in each game. Breaking ball taken down low, one ball and no strikes. Eddie batting 357. It's low, 2-0 oh now on Eddie Cranepool. So now Eddie steps out to check with Don Hefter to see if he has the green light on the 2-0 delivery. Ron Sloboda is on deck. That's two behind, need to get somebody on. He takes inside of the knees, ball three, and it's three and nothing. Behind of the count, 3-0. Here's his pitch, and it's down the middle. He was taken all the way, so it's 3-1. One. 3-1 one delivery. Ball four, low and inside. So Eddie goes down to first, and that brings up Swoboda. And here comes Bobby Bregan to the mound once again. He has had Billy O'Dell and Dan Osensky warming in the bullpen. This is the third time that Bobby has been to the mound during the course of this game to talk to Clay Carroll. Ron Swoboda, a mother and father, are here watching the doubleheader today. Some 41 of Ron's family and friends, the Baltimore area, chartered a bus. They left at 8 o'clock this morning. Bus drove them here to Shea City, and they arrived just at the start of the doubleheader. And they'll be turning around and going back when the doubleheader is over. So I'd say that'll give you a rather cool day. Now, while the powwow is taking place at the mound, we'll pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. Stay ten on the dial, WGY and WGFM Schenectady. Carroll is leaving the ball game. Dan Osinski is being brought in. Right-hander Dan Osinski is on release. 
Two outs and a man on. The pitch to Swoboda. Inside, it's ball one. Dan Osinski worked the eighth inning yesterday with the Mets winning four to two. He allowed one hit, and that was a single by Joe Christopher. He came to the Braves in a deal for Ron Touche. Last year with the Angels, he was in 47 games. Won three and lost three. The veteran right-hander delivers. A swing and a miss by Swoboda. One ball and one strike. Dan Osinski has been around pro ball for about 13 years. He's had three years in the big leagues. 32-year-old right-hander. A 1-1 delivery. Ground ball hammered down to third. A big hop for Matthews. The play goes to second, and they force Crane to retire the side. So Dan Osinski comes in to retire the side. No runs, no hits, no errors, one left. Now at the end of six, it's the Milwaukee Braves three. And the New York Mets won. And now for the remaining action, and for Vice Roy, here's Lindsey Nelson. All right, Bob, and right now it's time for another unusual fact from the Viceroy Hall of Records. Here's what happened one fourth of July when the weather provided some fireworks. It was back in 1933 in Gallup. Bob Murphy with Lindsey Nelson and Ralph Gainer, and Bobby Brigham that will make a pitching team. Ray Carroll is leaving the ball game. Dan Osinski is being brought in. Right-hander Dan Osinski is on relief. Two outs and a man on. The pitch to Swoboda. Inside is ball one. Dan Osinski worked the eighth inning yesterday with the Mets winning four to two. He allowed one hit, and that was a single by Joe Christopher. He came to the Braves in a deal for Ron Fouché. Last year with the Angels, he was in 47 games. Won three and lost three. Veteran right-hander delivers. A swing and a miss by Svoboda. One ball and one strike. Dan Osinski has been around pro ball for about 13 years. He's had three years in the big league. 32-year-old right-hander. A 1-1 delivery. Ground ball hammered down to third. A big hop for Matthews. Play goes to second, and they force Crane Bull to retire the side. So Dan Osinski comes in to retire the side. No runs, no hits, no errors, one left. Now at the end of six, it's the Milwaukee Braves three, and the New York Mets one. And now for the remaining action, and for Vice Roy, here's Lindsey Nelson. All right, Bob, and right now it's time for another unusual fact from the Vice Roy Hall of Records. Here's what happened one fourth of July when the weather provided the fireworks. It was back in 1933 in Gallup, New Mexico. A game was held up because it was just too hot to play ball. And then two hours later, the same game was called off completely. Hot weather? No, sir. A snowstorm. Let's get away from the weather now and find out whether you've tried Viceroy. Because when you do try them, you've just got to like them. You see, Viceroy is specifically designed to taste the way you'd like a filter cigarette to taste. Not too strong, like some brands that taste as if they didn't have a filter, and not too light, like others. You know the kind, they just don't seem to satisfy your taste. But Viceroy is not too strong, not too light. Viceroy's got the filter for the taste that's right. Viceroy's got the taste that's right. Not too strong and not too light. Stadium in New York on instruction from umpire Lee Wire behind the plate. The lights have been turned on for the completion of this ball game. We still have plenty of daylight and plenty of sunlight left. However, and by turning on the light, the light remains constant for the remainder of the ball game, and some of the shadows are erased as well. Henry Aaron is up to lead off. He's a right-hand batter, and Galen Cisco pitches in there for a call strike. Larry Menard. Precautionary measure. 
It does not appear to be a serious injury. Count to Allen is one ball and two strikes. The Milwaukee Braves won the first game of today's doublehead here by a score of 8-2. And the Braves are leading in this one by a score of 3-1. Here's a pitch that is low, and Jesse Gandhi was ready to fire it on down to third, but turns around to look at Lee Wire, as the call is ball, and it's 2-2. Two -two. Eddie Matthews waiting on deck. Here's a pitch in there for a call strike three. Got him that time on a breaking ball. Strike out for Cisco. Eddie Matthews up now. Nothing for three in this game. Candlestick Park in San Francisco. Mirakami has been brought in now. Mastanori Mirakami has been brought into the game by the Giants in the Lisa Gamo and Perry in the eighth inning with a score tied 2 2. So it didn't take the Giants too long to get their Japanese import into action. They got to Matthews. The pitch goes outside for ball two. Yeah. This is the 2-0 delivery. Thrown out and fouled off right down into the dirt. Picked up by Gondry. Inspected by Lee Wire. Thrown out and another ball is put in play. The young fella sitting in the first row down there near the ball boy. Every time the ball is thrown out, he's got to hold his hands up like here. Throw it to me. 2-1 pitch. Missed high. Three balls and one strike. Now to Eddie Matthews. Cisco taking a moment before continuing work. One delivery. Swung out and fouled on the left field line into the seats and out of play. Joe Torrey is waiting on deck. That ball hits the concrete and the arm bound it on up to the other deck. A great decision that they have to make on balls like that. Do you wave at the camera or do you go for the foul ball? It's about 50-50. Here's the payoff pitch. And it's in for a call strike three. So Matthews been called out. Well, that's quite an achievement for Galen Cisco. He has struck out Henry Aaron and Eddie Matthews successively. And Joe Torrey is coming up. Torrey is two for three in this game. He had two hits in the first game. He had a three-run homer in the first game and a two-run homer in this one. The Braves are leading here by a score of three to one. Top half of the seventh inning. Foul ball on the left side and out of play. Doubleheader. The 
There's a big swung on and foul back. Gets out of play. One and two now to Gene Oliver. Pitch is low and away. Count levels at two and two. Rippling a little bit on the flag staff in center field. 2 2 pitch. Breaking ball is missed outside, so the count runs full. The message on the message board in right field says Braves pitcher Clay Carroll was removed from the game because he had pulled the back muscle while fielding in the fifth inning. The injury does not appear to be serious. Ball it on the ground to short as he charged by McMillan. Let it loose in a hurry, and he does just in time. One run, one hit. The home of my story. No errors, not left. The score is the end of six and a half. The Braves four, the Mets one. And here's a very sad French Canadian song about a fellow who lost the key of his clarinet. <laughs> De Ma Clarinette is a song with the kind of humor French Canadians love. But one song leads to another, and the first that follows is no laughing matter. Grand Antico is what they'll sing as they reach for a beer. Probably Rheingold extra dry. In fact, in New York City, where there are more different kinds of people than in any other city in the world, more people drink Rheingold than any other beer. And Rheingold is going great in New Jersey, New England, and Pennsylvania, too. Why do French Canadians like Rheingold? We don't know, but we must be doing something right. Jackson 
field and pitches in for a call strike. Osinski has a deceptive delivery in that he tends to sort of turn that arm a little on the delivery. And it is not a fluid type where the ball can be followed closely or easily. comes over to field the ball. Yogi caught the entire first game, and he's been on the coaching lines at first in this second game. Ozinski checks Hickman at second. Two strike pitch to Gondor, and it's tight. Across the letter, drops him back. It's one and two. waiting on deck. The Mets trying to battle back here in the bottom half of the seventh inning. One, two, pitch. Swung on, hit deep to right. Way back there. It will not be out of the park, but it's off the wall. And Hickman held up. He moves on to third. He's held up there. And Gondor is on his first. But is it first and third? Hickman held up. Until the ball hit the wall in right and then came on and was held up at third by Coach John Hefner, so that it's a long single off the wall in right for Jesse Gunder, as he lined that ball. It wasn't hit in the air, it was a line shot that hit the face of the wall in right, and Henry Aaron got the rebound in a hurry and played it in. But it's at first and third, and Charlie Smith is coming up. Gunder's second hit.
And Odell is coming on. Obtained by the Braves from the Giants in exchange for Ed Bailey before the start of the season. Catcher Ed Bailey. Odell is making his seventh game appearance. He has won one and lost one. He has six 17 and one third innings in which he has given up 13 hits, four runs. His earned run average is 1.59.
step for the Milwaukee dugout. His strategy has backfired. Casey Single's strategy has paid off. Here at the bottom half of the seventh inning. And the pitch. One out and hit back through the middle, but a second base is taken by bowling the steps on the bag for the fourth. Hit back through the middle, and Odell made a stab at it and missed at the mound, but bowling got over, took it behind the bag, stepped on the bag to force Eddie Crane's rule to retire the side. So, in the bottom half of the seventh inning, the New York Mets came up with three runs on a total of four hits. There were no errors and three men left. So the score at the end of seven full innings is the Mets four and the Braves four. Come see the Mets play the Cincinnati Reds in the AFL-CIO Salute to Labor doubleheader next Sunday, May 16th. This announcement is brought to you by Rheingold Brewery. New pitcher coming in for the New York Mets, and right now we're going to pass the station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. A 10 on the dial, WGY and WGFM Schenectady.
Zuzu pitch. That's way out there and comes on by Gondier. So the count is full at three and two.
second, double in the six. And now he's going to be intentionally walked on instructions from the dugout to uh, either make Billy O'Dell bat or force manager Bobby Bregan to make a move for him. Philippe Ballou is being purposely passed. Passes issued now. Let's see what the Braves do. They call Odell back. Maybe Clem shot. He's around the bat rack at this moment. Lou Clem shot batting for Billy Odell. With runners at first and third and two men out. Clem shot has been up 15 times this year and had one hit. He's coming out swinging the bats right now. Nor is there any action. 
action in the Milwaukee bullpen. The score is tied 4-4. Four, four. Giants got four runs in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Through eight innings now, the Giants lead the Dodgers by a score of six to three. Jim Betsky is going to bat for himself here now in the bottom half of the eighth inning. And the ground ball, a comebacker, taken by Keith and at the mound. He throws to Philippe Ballou, and there are two men out. That will bring up Jesse Gonder. He'll take his time coming up to give Betsky time to get a little breather. Betsky hit the first ball pitch. So now Gonder's coming on around. Jesse's been up twice in this game and had two hits. He hit a shot the last time up. It hit the wall on the fly. It was not a fly ball. It was a line drive. Gonder's had two home runs this year. Pitch is low for a ball. Jesse has a batting average right now of 308. That's another ball in there. Pops out of the glove of Joe Torrey. One and one to count you got here. And the one-one delivery. Well, on it on the ground at second base. Mike Bowling has it. He plays to Philippe Ballou and the Mets are out in order in the bottom of the eighth. No hits, no errors, none left in the score. Two eight full innings is the Mets four and the Braves four. St. Louis Cardinals will be here Tuesday night with Bob Gibson opposing Warren Spahn for the battle that should be. Then the Cards will be here Wednesday afternoon. Cincinnati Reds and on Friday night, Saturday afternoon, and a doubleheader on Sunday. The advanced ticket window here at Shea Stadium is open seven days a week. Weekdays 8 to 6, weekends 9 to 5. And there are Mets ticket offices at Pennsylvania Station and at Grand Central. At Penn Station in the Long Island Railroad waiting room. At Grand Central at the foot of the 42nd Street and Vanderbilt Avenue route. They're open 8 to 6 on weekdays and Saturdays 8.30 to 4. Especially for the convenience of Long Islanders. And there are a lot of Mets fans on Long Island. There's a Mets ticket office at Macy's in Huntington. It's in the Walt Whitman Shopping Center, and it's open during the regular store hours. And reservations can be made for box and reserve seats at any of the Howard Clothes stores in the greater New York area. In the top of the night, Henry Aaron will be up to lead off for the Milwaukee Braves. It'll be Aaron, Matthews, and Torrey to face 18-year-old Jim Betke. Out in order in the bottom of the eighth. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left in the score. Two eight full innings is the Mets four and the Braves four. St. Louis Cardinals will be here Tuesday night. With Bob Gibson opposing Warren Spahn. The battle that should be. Then the Cards will be here Wednesday afternoon. Cincinnati Reds then on Friday night. Saturday afternoon. And a double hitter on Sunday. The advanced ticket window here at Shea Stadium is open seven days a week. Weekdays 8 to 6, weekends 9 to 5. And there are Mets ticket offices at Pennsylvania Station and at Grand Central. At Penn Station in the Long Island Railroad waiting room. At Grand Central at the foot of the 42nd Street and Vanderbilt Avenue route. They're open 8 to 6 on weekdays and Saturdays 8.30 to 4. Especially for the convenience of Long Islanders. And there are a lot of Mets fans on Long Island. There's a Mets ticket office at Macy's in Huntington. It's in the Walt Whitman Shopping Center. And it's open during the regular store hours. And reservations can be made for box and reserve seats at any of the Howard Clothes stores in the greater New York area. In the top of the night, Henry Aaron will be up to lead off for the Milwaukee Braves. It'll be Aaron, Matthews, and Torrey to face 18-year-old Jim Betke.
boundary era. Aaron is one for four in this game. He's hitting 333 for the season. Ground ball is short. McMillan gets the big hop, plays across the green, throw in one away. And that will bring on Eddie Matthews. Nothing for four in this game. Matthews is hitting 268. Four 
four four. Now a two two delivery. Swung on and hit into the air to left center field. Racing over Christopher. He can't get it. Cowan one up. And Cowan throw goes to third. The long single. Holding his Matthews at second. And Tori is on with a single to left. Cowan was coming over. Christopher trying to get to it. Couldn't do it. And uh, Cowan backed him up and made the throw on to third. So with one man out, runners in first and second, that brings up Ty Clark. Curry has four hits in this game. He had six hits for the day. Ty Klein coming up for his first time in this game. He's had nine hits this season. Two runs better than he's hitting 170. He's a left-hand batter. Joe Torrey right now is hitting 348. is in there for a call strike. There may be better catchers in this game of baseball than Joe Torre, but right now I don't know where any of them are. He was the starting catcher for the National League All-Stars last year, and he's off to a great start this year. Besky now up and set. in San Francisco, the Giants have defeated the Dodgers by a score of 6-3. to three. Sandy Koufax, the starter, is the losing pitcher. Juan Marichal picks up a win in relief coming out of the eighth inning. Two strike count now to Ty Klein with one man out.
He leads the sign of Jesse Gunders. 2-1 delivery. Swung on, hit deep to center, way back, and going back in Cowan after one exact. Burkhardt says that he was in running position but did not run at the ball. 
Billy Cowan. He doubled down the line in right field. Then Joe Christopher came up and was intentionally walked. He had Crane Boo drew a walk with the bases loaded to force in a run. And the New York Mets suddenly were back in the ballgame as they had it tied at 4-4. Jim Betke, meanwhile, was holding the Milwaukee Braves at bay. And then in the bottom half of the ninth inning, Charlie Smith led off striking out on a knuckleball that was scored as a wild pitch, and he went on to first base. Ron Hunt was around the bunt, but hit by a pitch ball. Runners at first and second. Cowan tried to sacrifice, but popped the ball up. Then Joe Christopher hit a ground ball right at the bag at third. Matthews, anxious to make the double play, had simply to step on the bag and throw to first, but he bobbled the ball and hit him in the chest and rolled away. The bases were loaded, and then Ed Crane threw a single off the glove of Frank Bowling at second to time in the winning run, and the left slipped the doubleheader. Today's doubleheader was brought to you by Rheingold, New York City's largest selling beer. And what a remarkable thing that is. In New York, a city of so many different states, one beer has become the favorite. Rheingold Extra Drop. We don't know why so many people like our beer, but we must be doing something right, and we'll keep right on doing it. Today's games were also brought to you by Viceroy. Not too strong, not too light. Viceroy has got the filter for the taste that's right. And by the Shell Oil Company, makers of Super Shell. The gasoline for good mileage. Stop at the clean white pump for Super Shell. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this game on Classic Baseball on the radio. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Feel free to browse our library of over 1,000 classic games and be sure to spread the word. Long live baseball.